Hello and welcome. Please pause this video and try the problem on your own. So they tell us in this problem to draw the graph of y equals the square root of x minus 1 on the set of axes below. So here we're given a function and we're going to graph it. So the way I would probably go about doing this um, is to use a table, plug in some values into our function, and then see what's happening. But of course the risk of plugging in certain values is that you might um, assume it's linear or something. Let me show you what I mean. So we'd make a table of inputs and outputs. X is input, Y is output, and Y is equal to the square root of X minus 1. So if we try 0 for X, what is the square root of 0? Minus 1. Well, that's negative 1. And if you plug in 1 for X, you get the square root of 1 minus 1, which is 0. So, so far, we have an input of 0, an output of negative 1. On a graph, that's the point 0, negative 1. Right? Remember, a point is a collection of inputs and outputs. So, input 0, output negative 1. The next point is 1, 0. 1, 0 is right here. So, the danger is that if you just plot these two, you're like, oh, well, this is a line. Right? But if you only plot two points, you'd think you'd have a line here. However, if you keep going, you'll see that something is up, right? Something is not going exactly as you would plan. As soon as you plug in 2, you realize, oh, wait a minute, we have the square root of 2 minus 1, and the square root of 2 is irrational. In fact, the next point we can plot, square root of 3 minus 1 irrational, is when the input's 4. The square root of 4 minus 1 is 2 minus 1, right, which is 1. So we get this point 1, 2, 3, 4. Oops, 4, 1 here. So you can see that, that this graph, when you plot the point 4, 1, seems to have this curvature shape to it, right? Uh, but, but how does it curve, right? Does it go up and then squiggle around here? Like, what does it do? So to help us here, we can use a graphing calculator to get a sense of the shape. So to do that, we hit the y equals button up here. Then we want to enter in the square root of x, so hit second, x squared, if you hit second x squared, you see a little square root sign right there. Now we enter in the variable x. That's this button right here where it says x. And then I press right to get out of the square root because the minus 1 is not in the square root. We hit minus 1. And then we press the graph button and we'll see the shape of our graph. So this is a really crude representation of it, but it's going to be a curve that comes up and then zooms out right there. There's all sorts of things we can do to it to, to analyze it because we're trying to use the calculator to get a sense of the general shape of the graph we're dealing with. One thing you can do is zoom in. If you hit zoom, right here is zoom in. Right here, it's going to want to know what point I want to zoom around. So, oops. So, to, in order to zoom correctly, zoom in, I could scroll to a point. See my little cursor right there? I'll scroll to the, to the origin here and hit enter. It's going to zoom around that point. I get a closer picture of my graph. And I can see the curvature of it. And I know it's kind of it's kind of weird. It seems like it ends over here. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but we can also do other things. We can hit second um, trace. If we hit value here, the first one, any input we put in for x, it'll tell me the output. Right, so if I put in if I enter in zero, as I just did, it tells me the output's negative one, which matches what we got here on our table. Now if I try to hit second calc and then I hit value again and try to hit four, I'll get an error. The reason I get an error is because that is beyond the window that we're looking at. Which I do admit is really frustrating and kind of lame. But here, if we want to fix that, we can zoom out, right? So that we, we can trace or find the value uh, when x is 4. So I'm going to pick a center to zoom out around. And now I can't really see the graph again, of course, and I can mess around with the zoom window to make that work. But if I want to, I hit second calc, value, and this time I hit 4, it'll tell me the output's 1, which we got. Uh, another nice thing is the trace button. The trace button just kind of allows you to scroll along the shape of the graph, and it tells you the different x's and y values, and you want to pick ones that are easy to plot. A nicer feature, in my opinion, is if you hit second graph, you get a table. This table tells you corresponding inputs and outputs to plot. So like our next plot is 9, 2. That's one we can actually plot. So here, if we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 2, this point right here, right, we can get a real nice sense of the curve of this graph. As long as you label the points and try to show that you're curving it, um, 
of course you would get a full credit. We would be really demonstrating your understanding. And we can verify that in our table. The square root of 9 minus 1 is 3 minus 1 or 2. What happens to the other points, though? Why does the graph seem to stop right here? So let me pull up a different program, GeoGebra, to help you see this. So in this program, this is the blue function, the blue line, the blue curve which is the function we're trying to plot, y equals the square root of x minus 1. This slider over here will move the, blue, the purple point, or trace the purple point along the blue function. Notice it does en end right here, and it ends right here uh, as well. And we'll talk about y in a moment, but I want you to see how this uh, purple point traces along the blue function. So I drag it. Right, nice, two nice points there. Then we have the square root of two minus one, hard to plot. Square root of three minus one, hard to plot. Square root of four minus one, easy to plot. It's four comma one, and so forth. Square root of five, irrational output. Square root of six, irrational output. Square root of seven, irrational output. Square root of eight, irrational output, and the square root of nine minus 1 is a rational output. And those table values are listed here. But also, look what happens if I scroll down. My table still populates, but boom. All right, notice the point disappeared. And in the, in the graph, uh, the table over here, we have question mark, question mark. What's happening? Why will, why does the point disappear once x goes below 0? In other words, once the domain, we call our values for x the domain, goes below 0? Well, that's because we're dealing with imaginary numbers, and we can't graph imaginary numbers on this type of graph. We can do it on other gra graphs, but not this type. So here, if you think about it, what happens if x is negative 1? If x is negative 1, we have the square root of negative 1 minus 1, and that's the number i, i is the square root of negative 1, minus 1. And this is an imaginary number. There's no place on this graph for imaginary numbers. So here we're considering the domain to make our graph. The domain is our x values. Um, this graph exists when x is greater than or equal to 0, right? It exists on this graph when x is uh, greater than or equal to 0, or the domain is greater than or equal to 0. It does not exist below it. All right, hope this helped.